Good morning, everybody. We've got about um, three minutes or so before we get started. So if, you are, if you're gonna get up and get a cup of tea, uh, some water, notebook, pen, these are all very useful things because you're gonna be taking lots of information out of this session. Um, three minutes and we get started. All right, a very good morning to you all. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, first of all, I just want to say excellent, excellent, excellent. I see that almost 150 people on a Saturday morning at 10 a.m. up and ready to learn, up and ready to begin to get a boost for their careers for this, um, this year and for the years to come. That is excellent, excellent, excellent. So uh, I want to applaud you for making that choice to be here this morning. There are many other things that you could probably be doing, uh, but the fact that you have chosen to be here, that really encourages me. Um, and I'm sure you're going to take away a lot from the amazing, wonderful group of speakers that we've lined up for you today. They're coming to share their experiences 
um, on professional branding and just building an expert brand in your career. That, that idea that you are the go-to person when people think about a certain area, are they thinking about you? Um, and that's, that's a massive, massive uh, tool and a massive, massive uh, a part of your, um, of your arsenal for you to be able to build that career that you're, that you're building as well right now. So whenever you come into a space like this, listen, everyone who's going to be sharing and speaking today, we are also learning on a daily basis. We are learning and building our own careers. And so we're just sharing the experiences that we've had. God willing, you'll be able to pick a few things from, from um, the stories that are going to be shared. Remember today, today we're just sh we're sharing personal stories really about our journey in that direction. And I hope you'll be ready and willing to um, receive from those who are coming to speak to us this morning. Uh, I need to hear from you. So in the chat box, if you don't mind, just let us know uh, where are you around this world? It's so important for us to have um, an idea of the audience that we're speaking to. And now when we have, we do honestly have a global audience. Um, it is not uh, unlikely to find people from all the various continents. I think South America is the only place and it's a language issue. We shall soon be translating to Spanish and then uh, and Portuguese and we'll have a bit more uh, South American participation, but every other continent oh, and Antarctica, because I guess there are not too many people there. But so far, that's where, we, that's where we are. So Alice, great to hear from you all the way from Dubai. Everybody else, just type in the chat box where you are in the world. It would be so great to hear from you. Ah, great. The dub, excellent here in Kenya. Excellent, excellent. Sherry, all the way from Singapore. Welcome, welcome. This is Raisa. I hope I got that right. All the way from uh, Gem in Siaya County. Very good. Jackie's in Mombasa, Ted in Kenya, Bridget here, not too far from me, Linda, thank you so much, Mark, Edna, Isaac, great, Elizabeth, great, great, Jerry, Jerry Winfred, Sandra, all the way in Malindi as well, Joanne Kasarani, Naomi, Harold, Leah, excellent, Eva in Kikuyu town, Grace Mercy, Jane, excellent, good to hear from you, in Athi River, Matilda as well, Cindy here in Nairobi with us, Leonard, Michael, excellent, excellent, excellent. Wonderful, there's a name there that I am very familiar with. Hi, Elizabeth, how are you doing? <laughs> Otherwise known as mom. Ah, you've, you've never shown, I ah, have to, can I just give my mom a bit of a shout out? She's, she, this is one of the first events she's attended. Uh, thanks for showing up, mom, really appreciate you. Hi, um, I don't think I've ever called my mom by her first name before, but good to see you. Uh, Elizabeth, excellent. Dorothy, Joy, Hilda, Nancy, Edna, excellent. Marvin, excellent. Laura, a uh, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Nyando, I hope I got, I pronounced it correct. Nyando, Paho, Tadfor, all the way from Cameroon, excellent. Uh, Flavia in Uganda, I got it right, Flavia, I got it right. Frida, I didn't say Flavia, I said Flavia. Uh, Mercy in Utawala. Hey, 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 look at that. This is truly uh, a good group to be in. I'm sure we're going to get a lot more uh, information as we go through. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Kevin, all the way from Israel. Uh, when we're speaking now, we're speaking to a truly international audience. And so um, the, the experience, the ideas, the questions, the comments will be at that level. And that's what we're looking forward to. So uh, I'm so grateful that you have chosen to be here with us. If you're tweeting, if you're sharing on social media, the hashtags are Centonomy Career Hub. At the bottom there, you can see them, hashtag professional branding, hashtag career growth. Please do share even as we go through this session. If you do have a question, kindly, if you don't mind, if you're on the, the Zoom platform, uh, please do put it in the Q&A section. So just put your question in there and we'll try and capture it as we go forward. Um, if you are in any of the other platforms, I know we're streaming now on Facebook, we're streaming as well on uh, YouTube, uh, I believe on, on uh, Twitter as well. So if you're on any of those platforms, in the comments, just put your question and our team members will be able to pick them up and put them forward to the, to the panelists. It's a packed session today, so we won't get as many questions coming through. So make sure your question 
is right on point on the topic so that we can get to it as quickly as possible. And obviously, uh, if it comes in first, it will most likely get that priority. So as we begin, I just wanted to let you know, at Centonomy, our goal, our mission is to shift your mindset so that as a purposeful person, and we can tell that you're a purposeful person because you've shown up on a Saturday morning, as a purposeful person, you can create wealth and live abundantly. That is our goal. We want you to create wealth and to live abundantly. Our goal is that you create wealth and live abundantly. And one of the main ways that we do create wealth is through our careers. For many people, most people, employment is going to be on that journey. Most people aren't going to start a business, uh, but you can surely be very useful even as you go into building those businesses that uh, for other people as you work within organizations, just like myself working in this organization called Centonomy, it can be a massive step towards that wealth creation process that you have. As you grow in your career, that will give you the opportunity for yourself to be able to grow. And so we are ready to hear from those who have built great careers so that we know exactly what uh, they have done and we can follow in their footsteps. Our first speaker for today is Mr. Clifford Machoka. He's a marketing, government, and regulatory affairs, strategic communications, and sustainability professional. He works at Nation Media Group. And as uh, recently as last year in 2020, uh, took on uh, the role of head of external affairs and marketing. And that means that as a, essentially as, a, as one of these large organizations within the East African region, especially having that experience that he's had from other places, Clifford knows what it means to build a brand, not just personally, but even for an organization. And so Clifford, I'm so happy to have you here with us, um, uh, that you've given us your time. It matters so, so much. So thank you so much. I hope I can see you up there. You can put your mic on. Welcome yeah. to the session. I hope you can hear me. I can hear you loud and clear. I'm just gonna, uh, as you share your story, uh, everyone here is waiting with, as I am, notebook and pen ready to take down notes on branding. Take it away. Oh, thank you so much. I also have my notebook just to, to be able to learn from everyone else. Uh, I think you never stop learning. Um, but I will try not to uh, introduce myself. I think you've already done an extensive uh, introduction. Uh, but first of all, um, it's really a pleasure uh, to be here amongst colleagues um, and also amongst uh, fellow learners. And also at the same time, um, I think it's, uh, it's also a pleasure to be able to share uh, my experience um, and then also uh, hear from other experiences around. Um, I think I'll start just by um, what I'll do is uh, uh, talk a little bit of principle and infuse it with uh, uh, my own experience and my own journey. Um, and, and I think it's just to start at the principal level in terms of that personal branding or professional branding um, is as much as what you can call branding for a corporate. <clears throat> I think we all um, almost see it as something that is very different, uh, but it's the same thing that uh, any company, whether it's an SME or a big corporate um, starts from. And that is, um, if you look at what branding is for a corporate, it's actually their story in relation to their stakeholders, whether it's uh, suppliers, customers, um, government, uh, community as well. And professional branding then um, also comes in to be able to mean that it's your story. What's your unique story? How do you relate to your employees, your colleagues, uh, your community around you? I think most of us forget that all of us exist uh, not in a different planet, uh, but you have your neighbors, uh, you have uh, the people that you, your kiosk around you. And, and that also relates to your professional branding. And I think it's just to maybe reiterate some of one or two key things uh, when we look at professional branding. Um, I think one of the key things for me has in my journey has been, first, have you introspected? Do you know who you are? Um, do you know what's your strengths, your weaknesses? What is your passion points? And, and I remember once, uh, uh, you know, one of my mentors uh, came to, to my office and told me, have you introspected and thought about your purpose in life? 
And, and I think when you are able to think about your purpose in life, um, it actually comes and feeds into your journey. And, and your purpose can be many things. Your purpose can be service to community. Your purpose can be a career led uh, sort of journey. Um, but we all have to remember that career is not everything. So you have to be able to create that purpose. That purpose is more than just getting a salary, more than selling a few uh, products. Um, and I think you have to be able to introspect and know your purpose. Um, I think another thing that um, for me that is very important is what do you want to be known for? Um, you know, when you, when you are in your sort of at workplace, um, what are the skill sets that you have? What are the attributes that you have? What are the characteristics that you have? Um, I always say one thing, I'll never do anything that I'm not passionate about. Not a chance. I will never do a job that I'm not passionate about. And, and I think why is passion very important? Um, my professional career has been, um, I've led it through three major principles. And that is passion, excellence, and commitment. Yeah, coupled with discipline. And why are those three for me very important? Passion, never, I should be able to be doing something that I'm passionate about. Why? because I can do it on Monday, I can do it on Friday, I can do it on Sunday. Um, you know, we always talk of work-life balance. I, will, I talk of work-life integration. Um, and, and why is that important? That passion is what makes you to be able to give your career your very best, that you're not coming in um, just to be able to do a job. You're coming in to do something that you love. Um, while you're you know, if you're a marketer and you're driving and you see a good opportunity, take your phone and take a picture. Uh, what does that mean? It means that, you know, you could have been going Ushago or Shugs and, and you see a fantastic billboard or communication and, and you say, okay, this is a really good way of communicating. Maybe something I should adopt. Uh, for me, that's passion. Why? Because it means that on your way to Shugs, you've seen an opportunity and you'll, you know, you'll be able to bring it back. Uh, excellence. I'll never do something that I do not believe I have done it to my 100% capacity. Whether I have to repeat it 100 times, I will repeat it. Whether a corner is not, and it doesn't mean that everything has to be perfect, but it means that to the best of your ability, you've been able to do it very well. And you can sit back and sometimes, you know, it comes with failures, right? Uh, but you will sit back and say, this is not a failure on my part. It's actually a lesson, but I did my very best. Commitment, um, ensuring that whatever you do, you're committed to the cause. Uh, you're committed to your work. Um, you know, if you, for example, have not been able to finalize something, then you go in and do it. Um, I think when you couple some of these principles, people start seeing a very different side of you. They start seeing that this is someone who um, is able to look at um, his career in a different perspective. They're able to, and one of the things that, you know, these principles are not those principles you read in books and, you know, and, and then you, you go back to the office and tell guys, you know, I am for passion, excellence and commitment. No, you have to live them. You have to be authentic. Um, and being authentic is something that people see. Um, I, th I think another thing that for me is very important is who is your audience? Um, have you been able to define your audience? Um, when you're growing in your professional career, um, as you're developing your own story, um, you know, are you developing your story in relation to recruiters? If that's the case, um, then come to LinkedIn, you know, curate a really good story and a story that can be able to relate you to recruiters. Are you curating your story in relation to your community? Um, and that means that have you started participating in projects in the community that you're passionate about? Who is your audience? Your audience defines your story. If you're not able to define your audience, then it becomes very difficult. You will start seeing that your story is all over the place. Um, and I think that's really important. Um, another aspect is who are you surrounding yourself with? You know, um, I always say it's whenever you see a very successful person, trust me, 
he's surrounded himself with successful people. Whenever you see yourself with a person who uh, encompasses excellence, he's surrounded with self, himself with friends or colleagues who uh, uh, sort of embed the same principles that he does. Um, I'm not to say that, you know, you shun away your friends, but when I was in class seven, um, I was doing really badly in school. Uh, and and this, that was for me the beginning of my journey around excellence and, and, and commitment. And my maths teacher, um, I was doing, I think I was getting between 54 and 70%. And one day my class teacher came in and said, uh, today I'm giving pass marks to everyone. And um, so my turn came and I went to, and by the way, this class teacher was, you know, sort of cousin of mine. So I thought, you know, being a cousin of mine, you know, you might uh, go slow on me. Um, he looked at me, looked down um, on the class register. He wrote the pass mark of 100%. And I was like, wow. Um, so I walked back, but in, before I sat, I came back and told him, I, I didn't get it right. Just tell me again, um, what, what, as in, what, what was my pass mark? And he said, 100%. And I told him, how do you jump from a high of 70 to 100%? It's not possible. He told me, Machoka, can you sit down and get to work? And um, I then went and saw one of the teaching practice teachers who was there and asked him, how do I hit 100%? The first question he asked me is, who are you surrounding yourself with? And when I looked at my friends, my friends were getting 45%, 54%. And he told me, there's no way you'll make it. There's no way you'll make it. And the difficult decision I had to make in class seven was to actually change my friends. I changed all my friends. And I started keeping myself and aligning myself with uh, people who are doing well in maths, uh, people who are doing uh, very well in science. Um, and you'll be shocked. Before the end of that year, um, I hit 100%, right? And it tells you, it's the people that you keep um, around you, yeah? And it's very important. Um, I have friends who criticize Whenever I want to do any sort of initiative, um, before I sort of even go and present it, I'll run it around some of my friends. And some of them are very critical, um, but you don't take it badly. But what you know is that it comes from a good place. They build onto your initiatives. They build onto your marketing initiatives and you then see yourself growing. Um, I think another thing is that think through your story. Um, I think most of us have not sat down and thought through a concise story. So when you meet people and they ask you, who are you? Waidaka, who are you? And, and you know, in less than two minutes, you should be able to tell people what your story is. And, and I think that takes time. It takes introspection and it takes you understanding your journey and where you want to go. Um, I want to reiterate the importance of knowing where you want to go you cannot be able to enter this journey of professional branding if you do not understand where you want to go. If, for example, you say, today I am a, a corporate affairs professional and I want to become a CEO um, in the next couple of years. Um, the question then is, what, are, what is your roadmap to become that CEO? What is your roadmap to become the head of marketing? What is your roadmap to become whatever you want to do in your career? Now, once you've defined that roadmap, what are the milestones? And, and, you know, we always think of the big picture, but small steps are very important. Uh, they also carry you along that journey. And the last thing then you start asking yourself is, who am I benchmarking myself with? Every single day while I'm on LinkedIn, I look at um, other colleagues who have better experience than me. And I look and I start looking at what is it that they have that I don't have? Is it they have a certification I don't have? Oh, do they have some form of digital marketing that I need to understand? Um, if I am a lawyer, then what is it that this person has that I don't have? Oh, they have a master's. Okay, um, you know, maybe that's the direction I should go. Oh, they have experience in this area. Benchmark with people, with experts in the fields. It really helps you because what you start seeing is um, you start realizing that first, it's very humbling for you, yeah, that you, you, know, you don't know everything, um, but also you realize that there are certain things that you need to put in place. Um, I think we underestimate uh, the importance of coaching and mentorship. Very important 
to get a coach or a mentor. Um, why? Because some of these people are very experienced in the field. Um, they also humble you. They give you guidance in what you want to do. Um, I have a mentor. Uh, I have a couple of mentors and, and mentors can come in various ways. There is a mentor for your spirituality and it could be your pastor, uh, you know, being able to look at your social uh, sort of aspect. I have a mentor for uh, my career, you know, uh, people who, uh, before I make that career move, I'm able to call them and say, uh, you know, I was thinking of A, B, C, and D. I was thinking of making this move. And they're able to question or help you or guide you to, through a journey. So, so my mentors have been able to help me and say, look, uh, you know, they, they're not the ones who prescribe what you do but they're the ones who guide you. And you come back and say, okay, maybe this is not a career, a very good career move. Let me wait, let me wait. Um, and, and I think also in your career path is temper your ambition, you know? Uh, very important to say, in three years, I want to be a CEO. Uh, and then, you know, after three years, you get frustrated and say, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm still in the same position. I've not been able to uh, become this person. I think if you are able to temper your ambition, and some of the people who temper your ambition are your coaches and your mentors who tell you, no, 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 you're moving too fast. You have not been able to build a solid foundation to what you want to become, yeah? Um, and, and I think that's something that we, you know, it's very important in this. And I think another aspect that I think that we always lack is be a collaborator. Don't don't be a person who wants to do things by your own. Be a collaborator. When you're a collaborator, there are great aspects that come with it. One of it that comes with it is you learn from other people. Yeah. And another aspect is you learn to work with other people. Very important because it builds your personal skills. It builds your interactive skills. And being a collaborator also helps you to learn one thing, that it's very important for you to be able to achieve things through other people. Very difficult for you to achieve things alone. Yeah, and that's why the, you know, you remember the various, uh, the adage that says, if you want to walk alone, you will never go far. You have to be able to walk with various people. So be a collaborator, be a collaborator at home, be a collaborator in the community, be a collaborator in church, be a collaborator in the workplace. It comes with a lot of, um, opportunities. Um, I think other than being a, a, a collaborator, um, one of the things in your career you should ask yourself is, as part of what you want to be known for, are you able to take a project that people can say, this is Waidaka's project? You know, this thing is Waidaka when you read all over it. Um, and, and don't take a project for the sake of it. Take a project that is impactful impactful either in the workplace, impactful either in the society. Um, very important, why? Because in a way that's your legacy. That's your legacy. Never go to a place and by the time you come out, people don't know who you are. People don't even remember you, um, you know? Very important for you to define yourself through certain initiatives and projects uh, that you're able to take part of it, yeah? Um, important also to, I think, we underscore the importance of being human. Be yourself, be human, uh, interact with people. Networking is very important. Um, you know, many of us are, you're called for a cocktail and you say, no, I'm so tired, you know, I'm, I'm going home. You'll be shocked who you'll meet in those spaces. Meeting people helps you to be able to grow your professional network. And your professional network is not only in the area where you're an expert in, but it's also in the area where you're not an expert in. Why? Because there's something that very important in your professional career, building your social capital. You're only able to build your social capital when you're also networking, but bring something to the table. You know, you have to be able to, uh, you're not networking, just saying hi, the question you ask yourself is, what am I bringing to the table? Yeah, what value am I bringing to this networking table? What value am I bringing to the workplace? What value am I creating in my society? If you are able to create value in whatever aspect you do, 
um, I think it starts defining who you are. Yeah, it starts defining who you are. Value comes in various ways. Value is not money. Value is not money. Value is not your salary. Value is bringing your very best to the game. And that is in your skill set, in your attributes, in your character. That is value. When people are able to say, thank you. Thank you for being able to add one or two things to what we are doing. And it comes out of a very good heart. Yeah. And, and never do something because, you know, you're going to get something in return. Yeah. Never do something because you're going do it because you genuinely are helping others, assist others. When you assist others, you're bringing value into their lives. When you bring value into their lives, you'll be shocked what you get in return. Yeah. And um, I think while I'm about to finish, there's one aspect that we're, I find that most of the time we're very, um, um, we're very stuck in. And that is, if I'm a lawyer, I have to do law for the rest of my life. Um, you know, if I'm a finance person, I have to do finance for the rest of my life. Be open-minded in your career path. And most of the time, your career path is never straightforward. Trust me, as in you'll be very lucky, maybe one in a million where your career path is very straightforward. Most of the time, curveballs are thrown at your, you know, in your way or in your path, right? So um, a good example is I'm a lawyer, moved from practicing law, went into corporate affairs, went into communication, and now I'm doing marketing, right? As, as, uh, very interesting, why? Because, um, uh, you know, when, when I got, when I moved into doing marketing, the first thing I asked myself is, how does a lawyer start to do marketing? I, I don't know how to do this. But one thing that I say to myself is, every particular opportunity is a challenge. Take it up, never say no. If you're in the workplace and someone says, um, you know, Clifford, you're a lawyer. We're now, make, we're now putting you to run the factory. Take it up. Take it up. Why? Because every particular opportunity is an opportunity for you to gain more experience in that field. And trust me, it builds into your career path. You will never miss the opportunity that you work. Right now, yes, I'm doing marketing. But I'm very sure that it, it builds into my next career path. Yeah. And, and it's very important. Be open minded. Don't, if an opportunity comes, if you are thrown a project, don't say no to the project. The issue is not the project. Look at it as an opportunity to gain more experience. Yeah. And, and I want to finish by saying that um, I don't know whether my time is up. I um, don't know how much time I have, Waidaka. Um, closing remarks. Closing remarks. Fantastic. And I think in closing remarks, um, the one thing I want to say is your professional branding is your reputation. Bottom line, your reputation. What's mm -hmm. your reputation? Mm -hmm. And I think you, you then think through it. Your reputation is everything. Um, you know, your reputation in the industry, your reputation um, wherever you work, uh, wherever in, you are in society. I think it comes in handy in terms of um, being known for who you are. Uh, what is this person? Can we leverage on this person? Can we count on this person? And, and if you are able to you know, take some of these aspects and do it, you'll do it. But one thing you learn is professional branding is also a journey. Trust me, doesn't mean after this webinar, uh, by Monday, oh my goodness, you start seeing, you know, um, your, your, your personal branding growth. No, grow it, but define it and then enrich it and take it step by step. There is no person who doesn't grow their professional branding, even at the age of whatever age you're in. Even that CEO who is your CEO of your company or your, your own CEO and you think you're doing very well, you're still building your professional branding. No one stops to build their professional branding, just as the way a company never stops building its own brand. Yeah, so um, I think um, that's pretty much some of the things I thought I could bring to the to the to the floor, and uh, and I'll be willing to take any questions from the team. So thank you very Clifford, much. 
amazing, amazing, amazing. You should see the notes that I've been taking the whole time. I think the one that hit home for me was um, value is not money. And I think we talk about that a lot here at Centonum. We always talk about build the value, the money will follow. Actually, money is looking for value. Uh, yes. And so that, that's a massive, massive lesson. I don't want to take any more time. I want to go quick, like two quick fire questions that came early. This is Timothy. Timothy is asking, how do you prepare yourself career-wise to be competitive in a foreign market, a foreign country? Um, Clifford has less than two years experience um, and he's already trying to reskill. What advice would you give him? Okay, good, fantastic. Um, I've, I've worked in a foreign market before and, and, and so I know what you're talking about and the challenges you're going through. Um, I think how you prepare yourself is, number one, we do not take a lot of, some of us, I know some of us do and many of us don't, but we don't take a lot of time in knowing our organization. Know your organization. Knowing your organization is not just, you know, your area of expertise. Knowing your organization is turning yourself from being a techie, a technical person to being a business person. How are you able to understand your organization? Number two, research, read. Most of us do not take the time to read. You do not have to be an expert in marketing, but read, read and connect it to your business. Yeah. The more you read about your sector and your industry and the trends in your industry, the more valuable it comes to you. And number three, when you're in, um, um, in sort of outside the country, network. Wow. build those networks wow. Um, wow. that came in handy for me when when i was working in switzerland it's a foreign country you don't yeah. know people yeah. um you know you're trying to do what you want to do but yeah. you also learn that by building the networks uh, but build meaningful networks yeah. build meaningful networks when you yeah. build those meaningful networks they come in handy for you clifford in fact you you've jumped into shirley's question this one was coming up and i've seen it a few times in the chat box as well how do you build these networks? Because if you're surrounding yourself with amazing people, how do you even get in their radar? How do you, how do you get in their circles? I, I think I picked up on that you bring something to the table, but can you be a bit more specific how you built those networks, uh, those relationships with mentors as, as you grew? So I'll give you my own personal sort of journey on how I've built my networks. In I built one, network. minute. <laughs> one minute. One so, minute. Yeah. Um, you know, most of you could be in uh, organizations that are, that are members of other organizations. Yeah. Most of the time they, you know, for example, Centonomy could be organizing a cocktail. Yeah. Please attend that cocktail. Yeah. Your membership organizations could be organizing, um, and, you know, a certain gathering. The more you attend those gatherings, yeah. the more you're actually able to build your networks. So yeah. I rarely, I, I will most probably attend as many, and, and it doesn't matter what they are, but it's, there's value in going to meet people. So yeah, attend yeah. those gatherings, those professionals. And what you do is from there, when you go there, please ensure that you're going there with your card. And when yeah. you get the card, please save it in your phone and follow yeah. up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, Clifford, amazing as uh, you should see the comments. And in fact, I encourage you, if you can spend some time in the Q and A section here, and see if you can answer some of the questions we may have missed and just look at the comments. Everyone is just saying amazing. I think that the best comment I saw to, to give you uh, your real props, that was Amina who said, nice presentation, precise, simple, very clear, amazing indeed. And I agree with you, Amina. Uh, thank you so much, everybody who's watching online as well on uh, YouTube. Uh, I've seen you there, Gloria. Thank you so much, Bet, as well for the comments that you're sending. We really appreciate it, Clifford. Uh, excellent. And for all those who have been wondering, this session is being recorded. It will be available on the Centonomy social media pages. Uh, that's our YouTube and our Facebook after this. So in case you want to just go through once again those nuggets, um, we, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Clifford. If you agree with me, give him a thumbs up as we go forward uh, on this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So next up, I just wanted to let you know we've got um, some excellent speakers. As I said that was just the beginning. We've got a couple more to come. Um, I want to just let you know real quick about the program and how it, it works in with what we're discussing here. Just as Clifford mentioned, some of the things, they're actual practices. I love that he said, if there's a cocktail attended, simply being present, you begin to see who's, uh, 
which are the groups that are working around here? Where's the influence? Even just in simply being present, you hear conversations that you didn't hear before. One of the skill sets that we do is that skill set of telling your story. In the personal branding uh, uh, module, which is module three, we begin to talk about how do you tell your story? How can you quickly get across what you're all about? Building your personal brand and social capital, wonderful, wonderful um, modules that we go through. You can see the modules here on the screen, making those boss moves, the mindset, uh, knowing your strengths. So beginning to recognize what are you strong at, building your personal brand, cap social capital, and then now being purposeful about the next steps in your career path. And then that authentic leadership discussion, because if you're going to grow in your career, at some point, you're going to have to lead people. And obviously, if you're going to be able to lead people, you need to learn how to communicate. And that's what the Centonomy Career Hub program is all about. It starts on the 4th of March. And so I, we really encourage you, if you can be able to get started now, um, it would be amazing uh, to, to get into that program. Um, up next is a wonderful, wonderful, amazing human being, Dr. Bright uh, Gamelli. He's the head of uh, and, uh, managed securities at Dimension Data. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Dr. Bright, are you in the room? If you can switch on your, your, your camera and your microphone so that we can get ready. I think I saw you earlier on. I'm right here. Ah, there we go. There we go. Excellent. Yeah, can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Thank you Great. so much. Great. We're looking Thank you. forward to hearing your story. I mean, when, when you start talking about uh, a career like yours, especially in the area of cybersecurity and and uh, especially in a time like this, we, we're so interested to know that technology side. Uh, how do you separate yourself in such a competitive space? When you talk about on a global perspective, so those are the kind of things we're really looking forward uh, to hearing from you. And mm -hmm. I, I hope you're ready for that. Let me just get you up on the screen because uh, I can see that yeah. we were not sharing it yet. There we go. So uh... There we go. Okay, um, so I'm, I'm gonna share a PowerPoint presentation and also just give you a, bit, a little bit of story. Um, so my name is Bright uh, Gamelie Maudo, uh, currently the head of money security services at uh, Dimension Data Group. Um, I take care of East and Central Africa. Um, well, we're pushing it out there. Now, uh, my, my journey is a little bit different and I, I really thank Clifford for setting the base that he's already given a lot of insights already. So I'm going to even try to escape from what he's already said or just have a, some sort of a relation to it. Um, so from Ghana, I've been in Kenya 18, 19 years now, uh, technically. Um, and um, a bit of a journey of when I was in computer study when I was pretty young. Um, I, the curious mind me, I started doing things when I was around six. Uh, so my first computer virus was when I was six. Teacher pissed me off. I had to find a way to be able to actually uh, get back uh, at her. And um, that journey has been on and on. When I came to Kenya, I was in St. Mary's. I created my second virus when I was 14 um, because I just we only had one computer, which was in the library, which you can get access to. So I had to find ways of being able to actually get access first. So I stopped everybody from doing it. Moving from, day, from that to went to Daystar, Daystar went to... So Daystar was where things got a little bit tricky because uh, I got arrested by Interpol in 2010, February 10. I'll never forget that because <laughs> they thought I was part of a hacking group called Anonymous. Now it's a movement. Um, and I did... I, could tr I tried to do a, a few, few things here and there to actually just learn. So that, Daystar was where things took another turn of things. How do I get to become really good at what I do. I was an average student. Trust me when I tell you my grades were, my, my GPA, come GPA was 2.7. Not the best when people are getting 4.0, 3.9 and the likes. Um, that was my, 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 my come GPA. That, that really got me scared because I'm like, I don't, I was only good at computer science, a little bit of mathematics, but trust me, things like physics, I'll get an F. I got a D. I had to repeat the class physics. And people think anyone who is good at computers has to be good at physics. It's like, well, somehow I, I, I survived and finished. I went to work at Cellulant as an entry level security engineer. After two years, went to South Korea to do my master's. And um, so I finished my master's when I was 26 and I came back and my dad sent me back home. So when I was coming back, he did not know I was coming back home. He said, look, go back. You're good to finish your PhD. 
So I had to call everybody who I sold stuff to in my house. And I said, Get, guys, just return them. I'll give you my, <laughs> back your cash. I went back to Korea and I somehow overdid my credits when I was doing my master's. So master's required me to do 20, 20, 26 credits. I did 40 because I was just basically moving anywhere and or to any kind of um, class that I could go to. I wanted to learn anything and everything. The Korean culture of studying is very different. Um, the way they study, the way they're focused with their work. So I had to adapt. That adaptation changed me that I became a straight A student. <laughs> I've never gone below 3.9 GPA um, ever in my master's and PhD. And PhD required me to do 36 credits. My mind was really to 30. I was supposed to do a maximum of six credits a semester. I did 10. So one and a half years finished, did my um, thesis and my, my dissertation in the last semester, came to Kenya, got about 36,000 Wi-Fi passwords with a few friends in 12 hours, wrote a paper, and I was done. Now, getting a job after that became too difficult because I'm overqualified and underexperienced because you know, I did things back to back. So I started applying for jobs. On the 35th job, I said, you know what? I can't do this anymore. I had to downgrade my, my, my CV from PhD to, to master's. So nobody knows that I did master's. And I started looking for jobs online. I started looking for what can I do online? And so I started searching. Uh, but all along the master's and PhD time, I do a lot of presentation. Uh, currently, when it comes to cybersecurity or creating awareness, I've done 132. Um, that's what I can remember. <laughs> Basically, just to give awareness to people, how do you happen? And today, I'm going to show the audience how to do a few hacks here and there, which helped me to be able to do what I do. I did. Um, and that went on and on. And um, so I, I started speaking at conferences, and I got recognized by a few government agencies. I started working for them secretly just to research not anything bad, just research. That opened my mind, that opened my ways of being understanding. So I go to conferences every now and then, just understand what are people doing out there? What are the hackers doing out there? And I look at them, trust me, it's depressing because some people are so good that, I mean, you can't even compare yourself to them. But you know what? I spend time with them. I drink with them after the conferences. Uh, I get really, really wasted. Why? Because I just want to learn what they're doing they have to give me their secrets. So that's how I learned my time in Korea to try to adapt to the industry there. Um, so I met pretty cool people. I came back, um, but there's something that made me to survive. So I'm going to just share my screen to take you through a few things that um, I prepared. I was preparing this on the fly. So this is going to be quite random. <laughs> Um, so some of the things that I thought, and when I was reading uh, about personal branding, I, I look at it, I'm like, look, from Forbes, I got this 10 things, which is about 10, 10 golden goals of personal branding. You can Google that or I'll share the link with everybody. One has been having a focus. When I, when I was an undergrad, I was not the most focused person. And when I got into cellulant, when I finished school, I was like, how am I going to make myself someone in this security space? Because, hey, it was a very difficult... Um, space to get into. There are new things that are coming every day. And until today, I'm still learning. I still code. I still do things. And I'm a salesperson, by the way. <laughs> I'm not even a technical person that much anymore. So I had to get the focus. Same thing as Korea. I had to make sure that I know which area that I wanted to get to. So before I did my PhD dissertation, I started doing research from the first semester that I joined. I started writing papers. I've published about 14 papers. I don't even know where they are. They're all over the, the internet in some, in some journals, I, I believe. And I keep on having that same consistency because I said, I want to just create awareness. That's what I do. So what I'm going to research to create cybersecurity awareness, I would do that. Trying to be genuine is another thing. I, I like to be able to tell people exactly who I am, what I do, and be able to actually um, get to be genuine in what I do, but delivering that. Telling a story is another thing. If I tell you right now, Edaka, I used to be a heavy stammerer, crazy stammerer that before I could say why Daka, I would say, like I could not even say a single word <laughs> that easily. But I so I knew I knew that I don't know how to do videos. I don't know how to do this. This is the very first time in a very long time that I do such conversational videos online. I like to write. So my way of being able to communicate to people is to write 
It's helped to create sessions. I like sitting down with people and be able to tell them exactly how to do a few things here and there. And the consistency. It's very easy for you to lose focus in a thing that you're doing if you're not consistent in that path. Because tr trust me, you'll lose it very easily. And it's very easy to lose that focus. Being able ready to fail, of course, that was a very big part of me. I failed enough times. The 35th um, application that I did before, for, for jobs in cybersecurity before I realized, hey, I have to downgrade my certificate, my CV. I, I, I cried. Trust me, I, I did cry so many times. And on the 50th, 57th um, applications was when I got a job. So I kept on like, no, I'm going to fail enough times. And it, you're not going to be happy with everything. Trying to create a positive impact among your peers. My classmates, I always share. We had a habit in, uh, in Korea that every week you have to present something new. So you have to constantly be learning something. And you have to present to a panel of people from various labs, which then has to be something that to create an impact. So the new bright will always come with a new code every week, something new that I have to learn. And I had to follow an, a successful example. And that successful example is basically people who have made it in my career path, yeah. people who have actually have been doing great things. And I have to try to follow and see what are they wow. doing? What can I borrow from them? What can I not take from them as well? Mm -hmm. And I leave, my, I leave your brand. Mm -hmm. Until now, I keep on making sure that everything that I deliver is me. If you look at Bright, and I have to create some sort of way that people can actually know when it's bright and cybersecurity, we go hand in hand. Um, mm -hmm. Some people know me as a meme guy. So if you go on Instagram, people know Bright to be just a guy who posts memes. <laughs> you know? So this, I, I, but I try to separate those two and um, I have to let people tell the story. So if people can speak on my behalf and people can deliver what it is about me, it makes my life or my branding much easier. So you have to be able to leave that legacy as well with them that people can talk about that. How do I do that? First, I say drink water. Because <laughs> every time I talk, uh, water is what uh, makes uh, me to keep uh, going. Uh, so yeah, anyway, I love you to drink water. <laughs> so drink water. There is a definition of, of mentors and life coach. And most people tend to actually have a very difficult time trying to separate the two. Yeah, yeah. Mentors can guide you on your kind of career path, understanding exactly what you're doing, telling you you're making a mistake or how you can get to do the better things in life. Of, I mean, in career wise, yeah. but also life coaches will be able to tell you, no, you know, the way you're living your life, A, B, C, D can, can actually ruin you later. Yeah. So I have a mentor, I have mentors have a life coach as well who can tell me look the way you're trying to do this what you posted online is not good this is how to respond to certain things there's sometimes i even have to go to my life coach and ask how do i go tell my boss this is what it is i'm frustrated about abcd and she will tell me look you need to try and be political this way or that way yeah. that is something so people need to understand what a mentor is and what a life coach is Sharing ideas with, uh, with those starting in life in uh, your career path is really important. I started mentoring some kids when they were 11. 11, and right now they are 15 wow. years old. And I'm wow. telling you, they hack computers as easy as me. They present like me when you go to conferences, do things much better than me. And trust me, when I buy new gadgets or new ideas, or I see a new code yeah. that I don't have time to actually try out, I give it to them. And they'll yeah. figure it out in less than a day or two. Yeah. And they do the work for me. Now, the more I share, the more I learn. So I don't have to do too much of my work uh, as well, you know. And again, they take that in the, the definition mm -hmm. to teach other people. I've been doing something called Africa Hackon, which is basically a cybersecurity conference I've been running for the past seven years. This is the eighth year. And the whole game of Africa Hackon is how do I create a ripple effect? How do I create multiple brights out there who can make sure that this lives forever? We have a skill gap shortage, a skill gap in, uh, in a shortage in the in, in entire world when it comes to cybersecurity. So the only way I could do that is to create that ripple effect. Currently, I have over 100 people who practice cybersecurity full time, starting from the age of 16 all the way to 40, 50. And I'm happy about that because they keep on teaching each other. And I said, that's the only way to do it. Another way that I think um, about personal branding in the kind of career that I have is a two minute rules of description of you. Yeah. Yeah. If I meet you by Daka right now, can I describe yeah. myself in two minutes in the sense that you'll understand everything I do, how I do it, where do I do it? 
And how do I make sure that I'm constantly being able to deliver the same thing over and over again over time? Mm. Another thing also is I'm a listener. I like to listen to people. I like to listen to them telling me new things like, hey, can you find out how to, I just re- realized that I could do one, two, three, four. And that creating of a ripple effect that I did before, like yesterday, one of the ki- one of my mentees came to me and said, hey, um, so the TCL TV that I have, I hacked it. I was able to get it to the TV and I can change anything. And I'm like, wow, so how did you do it? And he just walked me through and I'm like, no, the way the structure you used it to actually explain to me was not the right way. Go and try it this way. And he came back and it's like, okay, Brett, I've changed the order of things. This is how I did it. And I'm like, you know what? Now I'm also going to try it out and see how to do it. Trying new things. People don't like to try new things. And that's what I'm going to show you today. Um, how do you try new things or being able to actually get new ideas? Okay. Uh, so I'm going to get back to that right now. When I was in South Korea, I was a bartender. I used to work in a factory when I was making very interesting things. I used to work there to building TV. TV stands for LG, microwave knobs bartending, street dancing, beatboxing on the street, party organizer, uh, MC. I have videos for MC and I'm not going to play that here, but I had to try things to understand how. And then that made me to meet a lot of people. Clifford was able to meet people when they are at cocktails, which I do as well. But I met people through bars and, uh, and places. One person that I met through a bar actually took me to where he was staying on an island when I was in Korea, just because I bought him a Long Island. This guy brought me to a place where he, he rented half the restaurant for us just to sit down. He paid for my taxi, which was $150 one way. He made a taxi driver wait for me. He took me in his Ferrari to his house where his car has a lift. His car is parked in his, in his room in the apartment. You know, such things, though, you don't come in touch with such people so easily. And he gave me a lot of details, ideas of how I can market myself or how I can position myself in terms of people. He charges $1,000 for every minute he speaks to you on phone, if you call him for a consultancy. And I tried that. There's somebody who I charge a hundred pounds for every hour that we speak for anything less than an hour that he gets me on a call, it's a hundred pounds and he pays me. And I also have to build uh, your profile online. No, not one line, this is online. Last thing, and that's, I'm talking about LinkedIn, being able to share your ideas. Last but not the least is Google. So I'm gonna take you through how to be able to do googling that most people don't do exactly so let me just stop sharing this screen uh so please take your pen and paper or your computer or whichever you have let me just show you exactly so there's a power in google that most people don't know which um i'm just gonna take you through so if you write site ke and say file type doc and you say nairobi university you basically will be able to see every or let's say let me put here resume you'll be able to see every resume of any Nairobi university professor that is publicly online but you don't even know that it exists there if i was to change this and say that i'm looking for people doing assignments so i put ppt and i put say um come and i'm looking for say i don't know something to do with um strategic and easily so why are you telling me you can't read anything new there are things that are there for free. You're not the first to ever do it. Somebody has done it before. If I change this to be say, um, say PDF, you'll find PDFs worldwide where you actually get books that have to do with strategic management very easily. Again, you're not stealing, you're only borrowing. I can use this to find Netflix, Netflix password for free. I'm not gonna show that, but <laughs> another way you say entitle index um off and i'm looking for say um things to do with um let's say personal branding and i'm looking for pdf documents you will find books like this so if you if you click on that link uh, or anything with a slash in them you'll find out that it shows you the back end oh wait a second can you still see my screen no it's gone off you can put it back on yeah, sorry. So it, it shows you pages like this where you can download books for free directly from the server. Same for books, same for movies, same for series, but I'm not going to go into those, that, those right now because I don't have that much time. So it's quite easy for you to be able to get almost anything and everything you want. If you're looking for the tutorials on that, check my website, brazil.com, 
and click on the word commands. You'll find all of the tutorials there. I wrote this tutorial for my sister when she was doing her medicine and she wanted books. She couldn't afford them at that time. And I had to find a way for her to borrow, not to steal um, online. So those are just ways for you to be able to get some of the details um, online. So how does this, how, I just want to close up a little few things here and there. There's something that has to do when it comes to what they call deep work. And this is what really saved me when I was in South, in, in South Korea. Being able to understand the, what, what, what you call a state of flow, that you have certain rules and embrace deliberate practice as a concept of what you call deep work. Deep work is just basically repetitions of things that you create a particular way or path for you to constantly be doing things in a way that it becomes part and parcel of you. So there's a rule of thumb that it takes 25 minutes of deliberate focus or without distraction to create that state of flow. If you have 25 minutes focused on anything that you're doing without any extra distraction, trust me, whatever you're reading or whatever you're trying to study will stick. If you get a break in that 25 minutes by switching to Instagram or Twitter or Facebook or whatever it is, you've break that flow and that does not create deep work. Now, there's something we call the loss of productivity which is of course a high, people try to be look so busy, but they're not, that doesn't mean you're, you're productive. And a lot of people ask me if I sleep because I'm always online, I'm always posting things at very weird hours, I do sleep. Just that I know how to create a very short period of time for anything that I want to study. And trust me, I study something new, I study a new code almost every week, not almost every week, actually every week to learn what is new. I go on LinkedIn to read anything that's what, uh, that I see there. I go on Twitter every three in the morning just to see what is new that somebody has shared, a code, and I'll send it to my other WhatsApp number and read later. So we need to understand what shallow work is. I can share this document with everybody when the video has been shared out that you can actually get to go through it. Shallowness of that, and I picked this from my book called um, uh, Deep Work by Carl Newport. So I'll share that link as well in the, in the, in the comments and a summary of it so that you can actually get to see. So most people have to have been doing a lot of shallow work, trying to look busy, but they're not very productive. So the time that you spend, the intensity of that focus will be able to actually get to make you to have that deep work. So having practice to practice anything is not the same as deliberate practice. Those are two different things. So being able to actually focus on exactly what you're doing, having that press for systematic strength to actually push yourself to that limit for that 25 minutes will make a very big difference. Trust me, this saved me in Korea to become a straight A student. It's not because I was that smart. I just had to find a way of being able to create some sort of flow. It became a habit and I have to do that. So to close up, there's something we call a 30 hour skill. A lot of people are right here. They don't know exactly what to do or how to even go in exactly what they're trying to do. And they want to see how can I make sure that I can create something new or learn something new. Um, I was a very, I'm a cybersecurity engineer by profession. I'm a very focused when it comes to technical stuff. But when I changed jobs from cellulant to, to internet solutions, which is a dimension data, I had to become somebody who is in sales. I have to learn sales. I have to learn how to sell. I have to learn numbers, which I'm not comfortable with. This 30 hour skill is what something that helped me. So you pick a skill that you, that you can be useful in, a, in the current path. For me, that was sales, sales and marketing. If you, don't if you don't have a path, pick a skill that can generally be useful to you. Again, that is my sales and marketing. Give it a try to, of 30 hours of deep work. Remember there's a state of flow, deliberate practice, and how do you be able to actually create that state of flow with you, within you of deep work. So at first I hated it. I hated those numbers on the screen. I didn't know what, um, PNL and the likes are, I didn't understand what uh, gross profits, I didn't understand any of those, but I had to make sure I get to like it a little bit by trying to just read something. I got discouraged at the beginning, but later I had to get to seek um, ideas from people. I went to my MD and I'm like, please explain to me what you mean by numbers. Where are we in the, in, in, in the market? Where, how much are we doing in profit? Uh, we're going to get bonus because of the way we are. I don't need to understand. And he just spent 30 minutes and he had explained everything to me and I had to go read extra. So things we're not good at at the first time will be very scary. Um, and we want to just stop it, but we don't have to. So the trick of overcoming that is to first reward in your, 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 your new experiences. Those 30 hours, split that into four hour sessions. That would be 7.5. You can make it eight hours for a buffer and set clear goals of how you want to achieve those. 
So with that, I think we're putting it together with a Google search that I just showed you. I think um, that basically sums up my personal branding and journey. Uh, I could talk for the next one hour, but I think it's 22 minutes right now. So I've been told my time is supposed to be 22, be 20 minutes. I'll stop it right there and uh, welcome questions. Wow, as always, hey, to a fellow Centurion, good to see you. I remember that computer in the library. Um, you guys in high school were the ones who you took control of it. We never had the chance to use it yeah. at that time, but but I can see you used it for something good. Everyone was asking your website, if you don't mind, if you can type it in the chat box or just tell people how we can find you because uh, a, a couple of people missed that in your conversation. I've, I've just put you? that. Okay, but just mention it for those who uh, are able to see. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. My brightzed.com. Uh, so bright, B-R-I-G-H-T. Uh, Z -O -O -E -D .com. I'm easily reachable on LinkedIn. I'm easily reachable on, on, on Instagram. Uh, you can find me at all of those places. Um, so it's very easy to find me. Quick question from Valentine. She says, hi, Bright. Um, what advice would you give someone with more than one interest, more than one passion? Is it good? Um, uh, is good at all of them, sorry, and is confused on which one to focus on? This is, Valentine is obviously very talented. How do you help her? Yeah, um, you have to try to weigh those two. Um, you can't, you can't, if you try to do everything and everything at once, you, you, you'll end up not having a balance. So one has to be higher than the other. Um, personally, I, you, you, I'm, I'm good at the technical aspect of things. So I still apply that and not do a lot of sales. So I can do it. I try to see which one am I, there has to be one that is much, much heavier than the other. So you have to keep, create that balance and go with, the one that is heavier. However, that doesn't mean you should stop the other ones that you're good at. You can actually create time for those and engage them, but you don't have to necessarily have a lot of time for those. Um, for example, I practice martial arts. I would love to teach martial arts, which I used to teach Kung Fu. Um, I, love to, I love to drum. I drum a lot, but I, I, don't, I don't have time. for. I have to spend time to be able to spread that out and be able to do all of those at the same time. And... Um, it, it, it just has to be a balance that you have to create for the same. What's your daily routine? Yeah. That's uh, Shiko online, I think, on Facebook, who was asking that. Thank you to everybody who's on Facebook, Stella, Jerry, sure. Leah, Irene. They're all asking, Bright, what's your daily schedule like? What's your routine like? That, that's, a, that, that's a very good question. When I wake up, um, every day that I wake up, I have Google Keep and... Um, Microsoft to do. So those two apps, I go there to actually list down things that I have to do. So I basically write down and categorize for work, personal, um, for home, because I have time for my wife and my kid as well. <laughs> so I have to list down things that I'm supposed to do that I can check out. Now, after putting that together, that's around eight in the morning. Um, at eight, put that down. I know how my plan is set out. And when I'm having my coffee, I like to read something because by the time I put in the coffee in the in microwave to, and um, for you to heat, that's one minute, for example, that I can use. And also the coffee maker, that one minute or two minutes, I've read something on Twitter. Just want to see what is new. I check my email, generally what is urgent, and I, I can prioritize in my head what I'm going to respond to. And I get to work at 8.30 or 9.00. Now uh, I can work from home. My, my work is pretty flexible. So I can work from home or I can go to the office. If I'm going to go to the office, I have to actually put something that I can listen to. I like to listen to music on my way or radio. So that is fine for me. Some people do podcasts, that's them. Uh, if I do get to the office, I get to do my normal day job. If I'm, in, or if I'm at home, I get to basically break down. I reply to emails, get onto calls. I have back-to-back -back calls most of the time. So I do all of those and anybody who try to call me sometimes, I either have to list down that I have to call them back and I actually add it to my, my to-do list and I do call them back. Um, when um, by five or six, I try to take some rest. I like to rest and uh, rest my body, rest my mind, not necessarily sleep, but just to rest my body in bed. Uh, in between, of course, I have lunch. I have to do errands if I have to. Seven o'clock, uh, by six, from six going on to like eight, nine, it's family time. I don't reply to messages. I don't engage in conversations. I can be in a WhatsApp group and reply, but I'll not reply to a personal message. I, and then from nine, I relax and watch a series, maybe it's asleep. 
watch a series or two when I'm having dinner. And of course, I post a lot of memes on, on Instagram for those who know. Um, and of course, I get to bed at around 11. But before, before going to bed, I set to review all that I've done for the day, uh, put together what are the priorities for the next day, and I go to bed. Sometimes I go to bed at 1. And sometimes, somehow my body works in a way that by 3, I'll wake up automatically, not because of the baby alone all the time, but I just wake up a habit to read on Twitter. So I go on Twitter, I check what is new. People that I follow, I put all of those and I send to myself on um, on, on my other WhatsApp number that I can read the next day when I have time during lunchtime or anything. And I go to bed at around 4, 4.30, and I wake up at around 6.30 or 7, and my routine starts again. Uh, I, I, oh, I got in trouble because <laughs> I left my mic on for a moment, and I, I, was, I, was, I was expressing my, uh, I guess, my appreciation for your interesting life journey, and I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for that, Bright. Uh, that was amazing. Thank uh, you so have much. Look at some of the comments, if you can answer some of the questions in the Q and A section, that would be really appreciated as well. Sure. Um, this is Joshua Mlango Thank saying, uh, "I need to have a cocktail with Bright. I think you guys can organize at some point. I'm sure you'll have a great time. Really appreciate your time. That was amazing. Uh, for everyone who's thank been you asking, so much. I mentioned it earlier. This presentation and everything you're watching now will be available on our social media, Facebook, and YouTube. So you. In case you want to go through the presentation again, you missed something, you can always go and check that out after this session. So thanks so much, Bright. See you later. God bless. Thank you. Sure. Great, guys. So uh, as we move on, I just wanted to let you know the program, the St. Army Career Hub, is beginning on the 4th of March. The classes, it's only one class per week. Um, and you can come either on Thursday evenings, uh, 6 to 9 p.m. East African time, or Saturdays, 9 a.m., like what we're doing uh, this morning, East African, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. East African time. So you pick either, and you come for one class per week where we're dealing with these issues. I love that Bright brought up, brought up the issue of being overqualified in your CV. I love that idea of downgrading your CV so that you can at least get into the job. And those are the kind of strategies that we discuss in the program, especially in the advanced career planning we begin to talk about being strategic with our goals, especially around uh, interviews, CVs, um, promotions. You have to be strategic. And I love that strategy that Bright brought about, which was if, you, if your CV is overqualified, there's nothing wrong with downgrading for a while, get in the door, and then people will realize how much value you're bringing to the table. That's so amazing. And just as amazing, our next speaker is Rosalind Gishuru. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, the uh, Group Director in Marketing, Communications, and Citizenship at NCBA. I'm trying to get you up on the screen as well. Um, I, I, I really, I'm so grateful for your time as well because of your experience with multinationals. When you start talking about the Coca-Cola company, the Gillette company, with the, uh, which is now Procter & Gamble, when you talk about NCI um, Group, these are the kind of things that, when, when you have that breadth of experience, we want to hear from you. Uh, so if you don't mind, let me try and see if I can get you up on the screen there as well. Usually takes a moment. Hi, how are you doing, Rosalind? Hi there, how are you? Excellent. Hey, the, the men have set a tone. <laughs> Even I was feeling pressure as I was <laughs> listening to both of them, uh, but no pressure on you as, as I could see from, from your experience. Everyone is here to listen to you and what you've been through. Uh, take it away. It's your time now. No, thank you so much, Waidaka. And uh, I suppose, yes, good morning, everyone. And good morning to my fellow panelists, Bright and Clifford. Clifford, we meet again. We were on a panel at the end of last year. So good to see you. And um, I have enjoyed the presentations from Clifford and Bright. I mean, so amazing. Uh, and no pressure at all. Um, the women, the women are here. And I know that I have a lot of support from the women who are dialed in from all over the world. So um, really good to be here. So allow me to um, share my screen and uh, we will get going. <clears throat> okay. All right, so can, I, uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we yes. can, yes, we can, looks good. All right, good. And I think I will, oops, sorry. I will move. Okay. 
good. Okay, so good morning, everyone. Um, as Waidaka has said, my name is Rosalind Gishuru. I currently uh, work for NCBA uh, Group, and um, I've been in the banking sector for about seven years. But before that, I have been in the world of fast moving consumer goods. So I have about 20 years of uh, brand building experience where I have worked on some amazing global brands and as well um, some amazing local brands. And uh, today I speak about branding with the benefit of hindsight. So 20 years allows me to be able to look back and look at the experiences, uh, my highs and lows. And uh, what I've tried to do today is just consolidate some thoughts that I hope will be useful to the audience who are, are here with us today. So I want to say that this topic is obviously very near and dear to my heart. Why? Because we must all be concerned about our brand now more than ever. I think after 2020, with um, the pandemic affecting all of us in one way or another, um, you know, I, I don't care where you are in the world or who you are. I think for all of us, there's been a moment of a pause, like, where am I? How am I doing? Am I living my best life? What are the things that are laying dormant be, you know, inside of me that need to come out? So I think all of us have been through a period where we are introspecting and really asking ourselves um, you know, a whole bunch of questions about where we are and how are we doing. So the conversation about branding is very, very timely. And let me start by saying, for me, a brand, your brand, whether it's how you're looking at it, personal brand or professional brand, must be grounded on something of substance, something that is deeply purposeful and that it, in that way, it remains consistent and true, reflecting who you are and what you stand for consistently. So I take a very introspective perspective on branding today. And my take on branding is that it's an inside out journey. And some of these things have led me to, to pursue certain um, passions that I have. So for starters, I am an executive leadership coach because I talked about the benefit of hindsight, the benefit of 20 years in corporate, building brands in some of the biggest organizations across the world. So I have had to navigate very different corporate corridors. I have learned a lot so for that reason, I really find it um, a personal mission for me to just help people, walk with people as they navigate and, and chart their way through their own career and corporate uh, journeys. My personal mantra, my personal mantra to me is my words of affirmation that always ground me and anchor me as to who I am you know, desiring to be. And my mantra is quite simple, purpose passion and precision. I am deeply purposeful, uh, but I'll talk about uh, my purpose journey. I am super passionate. I think as someone who has built brands, uh, you know, for, for most of my life, um, it takes a lot of passion. Um, and then lastly, precision. Precision for me ties in very well with excellence. And I think Clifford spoke very well about um, excellence. And that's also something that I subscribe to uh, greatly. My greatest driver is to step into my purpose fully. I am on a continuous journey where I am pursuing my purpose relentlessly. And my desire is to live out the purpose for which I was created fully. So what I, have I learned um, along the way? That firstly, our lives are lived out in seasons and we are constantly evolving. I mean, I wish I knew that. Um, you know, as, a, as my young self many years ago, that life is lived out in seasons and we are constantly evolving. So even as we talk about this branding uh, uh, conversation here today, it is a journey. And every season of your life will call for a particular kind of a brand and it's always unfolding. So I wish I had known that many times when I put myself under undue pressure that truly, you know, sit back, it's going to keep unfolding as you continue to evolve. The second thing that I have learned along the way is that our life experiences all lead to a purpose discovery. I talked about being created for purpose. 
So there's innately something in us that is always in pursuit of finding that equilibrium inside of us. And sometimes when you're feeling a bit unsettled or when you are feeling like there's more, um, perhaps, you know, and, and I went through this um, in my years at Coca-Cola where my career was going along well, all was well, but I still had a feeling inside of me that this can't be it. So I, I think when you begin to question and get uncomfortable and experience discomfort about where you are, maybe it's, you know, you're in corporate, but you've always wanted to start a business. Maybe you've always wanted to write, but haven't started. All of these things lead to your purpose discovery. And then we all have a purpose. We were all uniquely created for a reason. There is a reason for our existence. When we wake up every day, there is a reason for our existence. And we are always trying to, to, to come into that um, understanding and to live it out that way. But I've also learned that um, process is very important in this journey. It is not going to happen overnight. It is not going to happen in a year or two or in 10 years. It, there is a process. So, you know, if I had known this earlier, again, I would have probably just flowed and not been as, you know, um, you know, gone through the highs and the lows as I did, but importance of process. And then purpose unfolds with obedience. And here I want to use the analogy of an onion. If you've ever peeled at an onion, they are layers. So you almost have to peel at one layer and that then moves you into the next layer and that, and that way. So until you get to the core of that onion. So purpose unfolds with obedience. <clears throat> Two more things that I have learned along the way <clears throat> is the idea of what's in your hand. Moses in the Bible was asked, what's in your hand? Sometimes we try to accumulate everything or wait until that perfect moment when you have your all your degrees in place, the perfect job, the perfect projects. Sometimes you've got to start where you are with what you have. So wherever you are dialing in from, start today. Do not worry about what you don't have. Start with what you have. And I will say this, particularly for those who are very hard on them, on themselves. You are enough. You have everything that you need to start the journey to your greatest self. And then lastly, and this is a lesson that I took very seriously last year, a man who wants to lead the orchestra must turn his back on the crowd. And what does that mean? Sometimes you have got to turn your back on the crowd and focus. You've got to have a zero you know, a zero in on what it is you are, you're trying to accomplish and focus. There's a lot of destruction around us. There's a lot of noise around us. But this I found to be a quote that has really helped me remain very focused on this journey. So personal journey, uh, branding, like we said, is a journey. And it is, you know, outside in and inside out. It's not just about your appearance and how you present yourself. That's all very important. It's not only about your online presence. It also is not only about your impact and the impact that you're making in the communities where you serve. It's not only about your academic and credentials and your resume. Some might even say, is it my identity? Who am I? Or is it about your personal and professional networks? I would say your brand is a combination of, of all of these things. So consider yourself almost like a jigsaw puzzle. You have many pieces that must all come together to define exactly who you are. So all these things are important in building out your brand. So the question becomes, I've talked a lot about purpose, which is um, a topic that is very important for me uh, as I think about the brand that I want to, to build. So discovering your, your brand purpose. For me, there are a couple of questions that um, you probably just need to introspect on. So when you think about your brand and the purpose of your brand, few questions to ask yourself. Are you passionate about it? 
Does it keep you up at night? Are you excited about it in a way that wakes you up at night? Would you like to be remembered for it? And this is the question about legacy um, that has been spoken of before. And then if you don't get paid for it, would you still do it? If you can answer some of these questions for yourself, then you're well on the way to discovering your brand purpose. So when I think about where to draw the distinction between a, a professional and a personal brand, there's really, they, they are somewhat different, but at the end of the day, quite similar. And for me, uh, whether you're building your personal brand or your professional brand, there are three key ingredients to brand building. And I relate this as well to, to building a brand, you know, in an FMCG world. Branding visibility. Are you visible? Brand experience. And this is about how people experience you. How do people experience you? And that's a very important um, reflection for each and every one of us. And for some of you, if you're not exactly sure how people experience you, I would ask you to get feedback. Identify people in your circle of influence, people who are not just going to tell you what you want to hear, but how do people experience you? And it ties in again with the reputation that was spoken about earlier. And then brand recall. Are you memorable? Can you be remembered? And there's a lot that goes into visibility, how you're experienced, and how you're recalled or recognized. So these are some basic rules to brand building, whether you're building your personal brand, professional brand, or even building um, a brand in the marketplace. But for me, at, at your core, you are one brand. And what does this mean? That you, you're one brand, who you are, must permeate every space that you're in. You can't be one way in the office and another way at home and another way with your friends. So if you just look at the imagery around this slide, you know, here you are in the office, in meetings, presenting, you know, as a leader of self, how do you carry yourself with family and loved ones when you're socializing with friends or enjoying a game of golf or presenting on one thing or another? Your brand is one and it must permeate every single space that you're in. So the questions to ask is what brand attributes define you? What do you want your brand to be and how do you want people to perceive you? And I just, again, challenge you to find people in your ecosystem who can help play back to you their responses to some of these questions about how they see you just to understand what is your starting position. But I will say this, there are some pitfalls that prevent us from creating a strong brand. And that is why this whole conversation, which is a topic for another day on self-awareness is one that we must have. But conversations like this and challenging yourself to be in forums like this, learning from each other, really help us uh, perhaps maybe be able to see what's at the rear view side. You know, sometimes we don't have perspective on the rear view. So there are some pitfalls. And I want to share with you some of the pitfalls that we find ourselves in, knowingly or unknowingly. So some common pitfalls that affect us in developing a strong brand could be and, and not limited to the following. The first one is imposter syndrome. This is when you underestimate your potential and you focus on perfection rather than progress. And these are things that could be happening inside of you. On the outside, you could look like you've got your game face on and everything's working out just fine. But when you step into certain meetings, when you're in the presence of people that you admire, people that you should be bonding with, spending time with, you begin to get that imposter syndrome. And I don't know if any of you can relate to this, but that is one common pitfall that I want to call out here today. And then the second one is shrinking to fit. You walk into a particular space, you know you know what you need to do, you have the answer, you've got ideas, but no one's talking in this meeting. So you look around and you say, hey, okay, 
let me just ascribe to the norm. Maybe here people aren't supposed to talk. So you're shrinking to fit because that's the cue that you've picked up from the environment that you're in. The second one around shrinking to fit is fear and self-doubt. And I want to add, especially at the point of breakthrough. And then the last one is self-sabotage, also very connected. When you are on the cusp of breaking through, whether it's in, you know, in your career uh, journey, uh, whether it's in, you know, as if you're trying to move up the ladder from one position to the next, or uh, position yourself um, for one thing or another, we allow the fear and the self-doubt to come upon us and we sabotage ourselves at that point. So this is another common pitfall, pit, uh, pitfall that I want us to be aware about, especially as we think about how do I build a strong brand? And then another one that um, I must talk about is comparisons, where instead of focusing on what's, what you have and what's in front of you, you are focusing on what everybody else has that you don't have. And we call that living in someone else's backyard. And that is why the quote that I shared earlier about sometimes we have to turn our back to the crowd is so that we can stay focused and not be distracted, especially about um, comparing ourselves to others. Another pitfall that affects us a lot is a lack of bandwidth where we are constantly overwhelmed, trying to do too much. You are trying to write, you are trying to start your next hustle, you are trying to grow your career, you are trying to um, you know, give of your time on one thing or the other, and therefore you become overwhelmed, drained, and scattered. So essentially there's nothing that you're doing well because you're all over the place. And this can affect your ability to build a strong brand. And then the last one is flying solo. And this is where you're not asking for help, guidance, or seeking knowledge. And for me, I want to tell you, you have to, as of today, if you do not have a mentor or a coach, please identify people who you can turn to, to ask for help. Flying solo does not work. We all need help. I have a mentor and actually not just one. In fact, I have mentors in every single sphere of my life. If you just think about the slices of life from a family perspective, I am a mother, I am a wife. I ensure that I have mentors that I walk with in every single area of my life. Some may not even know they are my mentors, but they are just full of such wisdom that I talk to them about, you know, life and where I'm at and what's going on. And I get a lot of wisdom that really helps me continue and move on this, um, this, this journey of bring, building a brand. The other one is a coach. I want to tell you that, um, Having a mentor and a coach will help you break through. Wherever you're stuck, they will help you break through. And there is a difference between a mentor and a coach that was alluded to earlier. A mentor, in my opinion, is someone who's been there before. They've done it before. So they are giving you advice based on their experience. A coach, on the other hand, questions you and provokes you so that you yourself can come to your own conclusion about what it is you need to do. So through powerful questioning and provocation, that's when you begin to ask yourself these questions and transform your thinking and what it is you're doing about whatever it is you're being coached on. There is a difference. And I do have a coach as well. Coaches don't have to have walked your journey. So for example, if you're in treasury, your coach can be in HR. They don't need to know anything about global markets, for example. They don't need to know anything about cybersecurity, but they can question you around the challenges that you're facing in a way that helps you get perspective 
and you yourself are able to begin to make the right decisions or do the things that you need to do in order for you to move forward. So there is a difference. And um, I would encourage you to establish a network of mentors as well as identify a coach. So I want to pause and just ask you a question, which you don't need to answer, but just for yourself. What are the pitfalls that resonate strongly with you? Out of these that I have shared, and perhaps there are many others, what is it that is speaking to you now? So as you reflect on what are the things that are holding me back, where am I stuck? I want to leave you with this. Your brand is a mindset. It all starts in the mind. And it's so important that you have clarity on who you are, what you do, who do you do it for, and what are you known for? It is time to introspect and to ask yourself questions and to map out how it is you want to move forward. So what am I asking you to do as a result of this conversation and everything that you have heard so far? Number one, audit your entire career. I talked about finding people around you who can help you um, shed light on yourself. Find the common themes and, and use that to help you build your brand around it. The second thing that you need to take time to do is to understand the value you bring to the table. I talked about the quote, what's in your hand. We all have value that we bring to the table, but do you understand it? And sometimes the only way to get other, and that's the only way to get other people to appreciate your value is when you understand it. And if you don't know, just ask those around you, ask your boss, ask your boss's boss, ask your peers, ask the teams that you lead, ask your family members, ask the people you socialize with, what value do I bring to the table? And then lastly, stop worrying about what others will say, especially when you begin to build your personal brand. There were stories that were shared earlier by my colleagues who talked about them having to make a shift because maybe they were headed down a path that they were like, mm -mm, I'm not going down this path. So when you think about the brand that you want to build for yourself and for your future, it, make, it may make others uncomfortable because now you're saying, I can't do that anymore. I can't think like that anymore. I can't spend my time like that anymore. I've got to become a learner. I've got to read more. I've got to spend time and invest and I've got to go back to school and learn all of these things. So meaning you may not even have time for the friends that you used to hang out with. You can't worry about that. So I wanna say this, even as I conclude, right mindset, everything else flows. So I wanna leave you, and this is my last comment, with a quote that I absolutely love. And that is, wisdom is the right use of knowledge. So today we have all gotten a lot of knowledge from those who have spoken and even from this autonomy program that you're in. But wisdom is the right use of all this knowledge. And to know is not to be wise, but to know how to use knowledge is to have wisdom. So thank you so much for this opportunity and I am happy to take any questions. Ooh, 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 ooh. Um, I, I wish I had my mic on now during your session because I, I, I wanted the number of amens that I wanted to give. Um, the, uh, boys, I think we have a winner. I know C Clifford, we enjoyed your focus. Uh, <laughs> Bright, we enjoyed your energy. Uh, Rosalind has brought both. I think we have a winner. And, and from the comments in the presentation, both uh, online and here, we, we really, really appreciate that. That, that was so honest and truthful. Uh, a quick question because it came up over and over again, Rosalind. Uh, what is passion? Can you define passion for us? Because uh, you spoke about it over and over again. And sometimes people think it's just things that you get excited by. 
But I think passion is deeper than that. Could you give us uh, your perspective on that? That is a great question. And I've always been passionate. So, you know, um, it's passion for me is what doing what I love, deriving energy by doing what I love. Um, it's, it's I, I don't know, passion. And yeah. if you're not feeling passionate about <laughs> what you do, and, and you're not feeling an energy yeah. and a positivity around yeah. what you do, maybe what I would ask and flip it back is to say, are you doing what you love? Yeah. Yeah. There is something that, remember, we were all created for purpose. Are you living your purpose or are you over here trying to run a race that is not set out for you? Yeah. So passion for me, it flows from within and from the depth of my core. Um, but it's also just really genuinely what I love to do and the spaces I love to be in. Yeah. It's just connecting with that in my mind and in my heart and yeah and and that's how it flows back to you <laughs> Rosalie, i i wonder around that issue of passion i love that you said the word the things that you love and i find that love is not love is tough i think love gets you through things that you probably wouldn't go through if you didn't if you are not passionate enough because at some point it's not exciting to do those you know those late nights uh, those long meetings and so as I think what I'm getting from you is that that passion is able to drive you through. Yes, uh, uh, yes, good point. And okay. it comes with blood, sweat, and tears. There uh, we this go. 20 year um, journey that I have uh, lived uh, has yeah. not come with just all, uh, you know, all highs. They have mm. been low lows, but I am determined even in the low to yes. keep rising. Um, so yes, it's, it's, it helps you overcome a lot. Wow. Kelvin is asking, at what point do you draw the line between comparison and benchmarking? Is, is there a difference? I think when you're distracted and you're losing focus on what you need to do, then I think check yourself. Benchmarking is a whole other thing. I mean, um, I am so challenged by the previous speaker, Bright, and just how much he invests in learning and the hours that he spends. That to me is a benchmark. But when I lose focus and try to live his life, then I have, that is, that is a whole other story. So it's, it's, it's um, just, uh, you, you know, is, is, it, um, is it helping you run your race? And, and that's where I'll draw the line. But or are you losing focus and beginning to want what others have? No, you build, run the race that is set out for you. So I think there's a fine line but that is where I would draw the line. Well, wow. Dennis is saying, how do you deal with the imposter syndrome? Um, this is something that has come up multiple times. Um, how do you deal with it? You know, uh, whew, yeah, the imposter syndrome. So let me give a quick um, story. When, when I uh, began my, my brand career, I had just completed my MBA in the US and I was one of six um, students, MBA students, who were part of a cohort that were hired by the Gillette company then. And so it's a very exclusive marketing program. It's almost like, I guess I would liken it today to a graduate training program, mm. you know, where a company just takes a select few and they take you through the rigor. They go to all the best universities. So it's really a select group. Mm. So I was very, very young and I was in the company of people who were older people who had gone to Ivy League schools. I mean, I went to a great school, but it wasn't Harvard or Wharton, but it was a great school. It was I, what I would say a second tier um, university, a good school, but I, I was not the, well, from a, from a degree perspective, the pedigree of my fellow six um, cohorts. So, you know, we are six of us and we're all assigned to different brands. So the first brand assignment that I had for the US market was Duracell, the batteries. Um, and then thereafter, Oral-B Braun, the toothbrushes and all of that. Very exciting brands, but nevertheless. So I was African and there's black and then there's African. So yes, I was a woman in a heavily male dominated environment and I was very young. So 
I had a lot of strikes. Actually, I always say that it was a defining moment in my career. Actually, it's where I cut my teeth for the very first time. So I had a lot of strikes against me. So when you talk about imposter syndrome, I have lived it because I had to run this brand for the US market. I mean, I was just an African girl in the US building brands <laughs> for the US market. So that imposter syndrome was very real to me. You step into meetings, you're doing your presentations. You know, you have five strikes against you. The every, everything is working against you at that point. But what you needed to do, you had to work exceptional. I had to work exceptionally hard. So when you feel that imposter syndrome, I have to say this, when you walk into meetings, you better be the person who knows everything. You have researched everything. You have looked at your competitors locally, globally. You have looked at case studies. You have studied the numbers, the, whether it's the balance sheet, the income statement. You know that, I mean, do your homework. Because when you understand what you're saying and what you're doing, that then gives you the credibility to speak. And when, the more you speak, the more confidence you gain and the more, so you begin this imposter syndrome, you begin to shrink it and gain confidence and realize that actually it's not such a big deal to speak up. So, so is it, it's real, it's real. And, it, it, and, and you know, the fact that I'm older today, it's still there sometimes, but I have to shrink it at the back of my mind and always even remind myself, I am prepared. I have done the work. I have done this presentation. I have prepped. I have recced. I have done everything. So it's a constant. And that's why for me, branding starts in the mind. It's a mindset. So be very careful to push those thoughts that come into our minds sometimes. Push them to the back. But you've got to be very conscious about it. I don't know if that helps. But imposter syndrome is real. Be aware and find ways of, you know, I don't know, shrinking it from your mind and just keep going forward. Yes. It starts in the mind. Grace Gitao is saying, yes, preach, Rosalind. Thank you for elaborating on that as, as someone else. Shiko on YouTube, Shiko has really been following and, and, and just says, I'm learning a lot. I am uh, mid-career and this knowledge is not only for beginners. And I think that's true. I think we, yeah. at whatever stage in your career, you're always learning. There's always something to grow. Rosalind, just an amazing presentation. As I said, we have a winner and I think we have a few people who've agreed here with that. If you can, if you don't mind, just go through some of the questions here sure. and also on the social media and see if you can reply to them because there are quite a few that have come through. But for your time, we are so grateful. Thank you oh, thank for building you. us this morning. Thank we really you. appreciate it. Uh, it's thank almost you. afternoon now. Guys, um, it's such a pleasure. And, and I hope everyone understands the value of the time that you have spent here. This moment is, is, is a moment of shift for you, I hope. I hope that you're beginning to see that there are choices that you can make along the way that will change the way that your career path is going to go. Um, I'm so excited because as you prepare to come into the class, uh, which starts, as we said, on the 4th of March, as you prepare, uh, just one second, yes, 4th of March, I, I want you to recognize that you can actually register today and because you've come for this open day session uh, for the Syntonomy Career Hub, that uh, the registration for you is at a lower cost. It's only 650 shillings for those who are outside of this country, uh, six and a half dollars, that's, a, that's all to register. And then the tuition fee you pay in, in four installments over the, the period of the course, as you can see them there on the screen, which is only 22,200 shillings about $222 over the period of time. And you can imagine, this is only two hours of time. You can imagine after you've gone over the more than 12 hours of the course program, as Rosalind said, it is a mindset shift. Some of the skill set that you're going to go through, practice telling your story. So that as Bright and Clifford were mentioning, when you have that opportunity, it's at the you're ready, you're prepared. Just like preparing for an interview, you go in and you're ready to tell your story. And that, those are the kind of practices that we go through in the program. And the question about, can you be remembered? I love that. I love that, that statement as, as you went through your presentation, Rosalind, because you mentioned, 
when you leave the room, does anyone remember you for anything? And I know many people will remember this session because of that. So I encourage you, even as you do so, to begin uh, to do that registration. You can do it through the MPESA that's there. Um, and also you can reach out to Wendy at centonomy.com. She's the amazing young lady who runs out the program for us. And our last speaker for today, this gentleman changed my life. Um, he uh, is an expert at per personal branding, not just etiquette. I know you know him from Epia, but um, this gentleman knows how to tell a story. He knows how to be remembered. He knows how to show you how to be remembered. Not only that, but in every meeting that I've gone for, I felt like I was, I, I, I don't know how he does it, but he made me feel like I was the only person in the room. I don't know if I should be saying that about another gentleman, uh, but Mr. Mwenesi, are you in the house? I think I, saw I am absolutely why that can let me try and <laughs> start my video. Um, that's right. That's what I wanted to get to. Uh, just give me one second. I'll also get you up on the screen here as well. Uh, there you are. Excellent. Uh, still trying to enable my video. Just a sec. Uh, but yeah, even as we're trying, I mean, that's all right. Yeah, sometimes it takes a moment to do that. There we go. I hey, hope. my brother, <laughs> I, to I told you, uh, I, th I thought we outnumbered the ladies today, but she has won. Just, just take <laughs> it away now sure. and, and close the session with what you do best, my brother. Take it <laughs> away. Thank you so much, Wendaka, and thank you to these fantastic panelists. Just listening to everybody, Clifford, Bright, Rosalind, oh my goodness, I wish... You know, there, there, there are moments where you wish you could just like freeze frame everything and, and take it. And I'm, and I'm sure everybody who's been on this session has benefited greatly. It's such an honor and a pleasure to be amongst such fantastic company. Um, for me, you know, everything that was being spoken about, you know, you were talking about saying amen and I'm, I'm, I'm there. I was like, this is church. Can, can, is, is anyone, you know, and thankfully we're recording this. So, you know, big up to you and Sintonomy and the team for organizing such fantastic, fantastic speakers. I mean, everything that was spoken about, I resonate with, I agree with 100%. Um, in the years that we've been doing Career Hub, these are the nuggets and, and bits of wisdom that we've been that 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 you you can you you you've come to expect from the career hub program, and and for me who is extremely passionate about uh, mentorship and coaching and uh, and uh, and continuous learning, especially from an adult development perspective, you know, listening to I, I I've written so many notes on my book. I don't even know which where to start. So I could quote everything that everyone said, but I think maybe I'll try and give my own perspective as far as what I think. Um, personal branding in your career is concerned. Now, <clears throat> my story, I've, I've, I've documented it, I've spoken about it in so many different forums, but um, I would like to, 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 to emphasize one aspect of personal branding that um, I, I believe in, and just to, to add to everything that the, the previous uh, speakers have spoken about, um, your brand is basically the mark that you leave on people. It is, a, it is a combination of your first impression and your last impression. Most of us are very cognizant of the first impression. How do I look? How do I, how do I, how am I talking? How am I smelling? What am I doing? But what is, what, what happens when you're no longer in that person's presence? When you're no longer physically there? Have you done anything that has contributed or added to leaving a mark on that person or that group of people? And why is this important for your career? Because your brand is the promise that you make, okay? It is the promise, and that promise can help people decide things on your behalf. When you're not there, I am the living embodiment right now of people making decisions on my behalf while I was not even in the room. People have decided to give me jobs, have decided to give me clients, have decided to promote me, have decided to increase my salary, have decided to put me on panels, and I wasn't physically there. I wasn't, I didn't come to pitch, I didn't write a CV, I didn't write a cover letter, I didn't apply for the job, but because my brand was doing some stuff on my behalf, someone somewhere was like, you know what, it was this guy that I met, he did this, he added this value, and I love the way um, the previous speakers, Rosalind in particular, mentioned, you know, adding value. Clifford talking about the excellence that you're bringing to the table. If you've brought anything to the table that has left a mark, and this is the point that I must stress, 
we think that branding is about being a celebrity or being well-known or famous. It's not. It's simply the mark that you have left on people in whichever spaces you occupy, either online or offline. If you have, if you have a, 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 a unique, something unique about you, it could be the way you dress. It could be the way you talk. It could be a natural talent. It could be something that you love. If you're not doing it with enough energy, with enough dedication and purpose, that it's, it's, it's not leaving a mark on people, then it's going to be very difficult to build a brand. I love what Rosalind said about start with where you are. I love that quote. And that's one of the things that we talk about in this autonomy career hub. Don't try and be something that you're not. We've heard this saying, fake it till you make it. Okay, you can try, you can try, but eventually you'll be found out, yeah? And it's much more sustainable to build your brand on a foundation that is real, that is genuine, that is authentic. So whoever you are, there are people who you would look at them and ask, and, and this happens a lot. We, I mean, we've been teaching Career Hub now for five, six, going on seven years by that kind. And there are people who've come into the room, hundreds of people who say in the beginning of the class, you know, there's this person who I don't know why they're my boss. I don't know how they got to that position. I don't know why they got this opportunity, yet they have the job. And you must, add, you must it, it always goes back to the substance which you are bringing to the table, which a lot of us focus on, substance, skills, um, technical capacity, that can only get you so far. But if people can't remember what you're bringing to the table, if people don't, can't, can't associate you with that thing, because there'll be a thing that you are doing, but if people don't know that it's you who's doing that thing, hey, <laughs> because other people will take credit for your work. And that's what happens in the corporate space. That's what happens in life. Everybody is in, in a race to try and get to the top. And you find that people who are not particularly remarkable find themselves at the front of the queue simply because they were able to leave a mark on people's minds. And that is what we, we try and, and, and do in, in the Career Hub program, especially those two sessions on personal branding and social capital. It is making sure that as much as you have this talent, this gift that you're bringing to the world, make sure that it is remembered by the people that matter. Because there are certain people who can, who can make decisions on your behalf who will, who will then you know, catalyze and increase your chances of getting ahead. And if you are not leaving enough of a mark on those people, if you're not in their hearts and minds, if you're not being talked about by them in the right spaces, then it will be very, very difficult. It will be a hard slog. You'll be the type who'll be waiting for end of year appraisal. And then, you know, now you have to start bringing, oh, this is what I have done and whatever. But there'll be people who, because they've been able to leave a mark and an impact on people's lives, it will be quick. There'll be quick recall. All right. So your first impression, your last impression and the promise that whatever it is that you're bringing to the table is making to people, that is the brand that 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 can help you develop your career at a much faster rate than if you tried to do it the normal way that we've been taught. Go to school, work hard, put in the hours, et cetera, et cetera. It's so, so critical. And that's one of the things that those are those are some of the highlights of what we will be talking about in personal branding. For me, it's not just, I'm not just speaking from a point of, you know, this is some theoretical thing that you can go and Google. I am I am speaking from proper experience. This, this is my own cooking. I eat my own cooking. This is stuff that has applied to me. It has applied to the hundreds of people who passed not through, not just through this autonomy program, but the people that I've coached as well. We're talking about people in high, high level uh, positions, um, C-suit corporate managers, directors, people who sit on boards, politicians, sportsmen, celebrities, you name it. I've worked with a lot of people and the, the principles are the same. If someone cannot remember you, if someone cannot connect with what it is that you're bringing to the table and associate you with that value, then, you're, you're, you're cooked, you're dead in the water. So I would really encourage everybody who's sitting here, think about what it is that you have. And I love what Rosalind said, think about what you have at the moment, all right? Do you love it enough where you could do it for free? And if that's the case, are you doing enough to put it out there so that the people that matter are able to benefit from it? And it doesn't matter, you could be sitting there, you could be a receptionist who might have a real talent at social media or events, management or events organizing you 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 had to get the job because i know life is life is crazy you do you do things because you have to pay bills i'm not i don't disagree with that and there are times when we have to do things that are not necessarily our passion but you might end up being 
being in a job that you're doing for the money, but in your heart, in you, the thing that you love is events, or the thing that you love is organizing, or the thing that you love is operations, or the thing that you love, whatever it is that you love, can you find an opportunity in your space? And this is one of the things that we speak about. There's a big difference between being an employee and an entrepreneur. Centonomy has focused a lot of time and resources on building entrepreneurs fantastically well. But there's a, there's a similarity to the people who think of themselves not just as employees, but as businesses. When you think of yourself as a business where you're sitting, you could be a receptionist sitting there. You could be someone who's sitting there in accounts and, and you'll say, ah, no one bothers with accountants. No one cares about accountants. We're just here to do balance sheets and that's it. But you could be sitting there as an accountant and you have this gift of listening to people. You have this gift of being able to listen and, 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 fit and solve a problem. You could be, your, your talents, your, your passion, your gift could be best suited in marketing. But if no one knows about it, how do you expect to, to benefit from it? If no one knows that you have what you have and you're not thinking of yourself as a business adding value to customers around you, eh, your progress will be tricky. And I know, I know it's frustrating out there. I know many of us are dealing with this difficult economic time. COVID has wrought, wreaked havoc on, uh, on, 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 our, on our ability to, to earn a living. But guys, when you are part of the Syntonomy Career Hub and you start to consider yourself as an entity, as a money-making value-adding ent entity that needs to be branded, that needs to be marketed, that needs to be put into the world, you then go from earning just a salary to creating massive opportunities for yourself because again, Syntonomy is about wealth creation. So Mimi, sit down guess, Anna. Uh, let me just pause there because I can go on and on about this. Uh, but uh, I really, really, guys, branding, it is, it is the difference between you making it a little bit and you absolutely blowing up in your career. Wow. My brother, you've already caused problems. Uh, this is now Doreen. Doreen has said, and I think you have to answer her question. How do you start from where you are when you've already made an impression that might not represent your full potential. So people have already a mindset that's wrong. Help Doreen, please, Moinesi. Agreed, and that's, that's, that's a quick rebranding exercise. That's something that we will fix in module three, no problem. The first step is to first accept yourself. You know, you know someone, I think it was Rosalind again, who mentioned self-awareness. We spend so, we will spend a lot of time, in fact, pretty much all of module one to three is going to be on self-awareness, facing your fears, knowing your strengths, having a mindset and an attitude of being a boss. You must first be the general and not the soldier because a lot of us are victims of our environment, okay? People who build strong brands are not saying, oh, well, the environment has already decided for me. The people have already decided who my brand is. No, you can change your brand at any time, in any space, at any moment. You can decide for yourself today. I want to be this person and I want the following things and the following outcomes for my life. Then now you go into a, period, a, a process of self-awareness. You start to look honestly at the strengths that you have in your hand. What can you do really, really well? And we're gonna speak about flow in module two. What do you have that you can do really well that you look at it and time is passing? I mean, Bright was mentioning some of the things that he would, he would just end up doing, whether it's martial arts, whether it's you know, coding. You have this thing inside you where you just wanna do it and keep doing it and keep doing it. Focus on that, drill down into that. Clifford spoke about excellence. Your excellence, that thing that you do excellently well. Once you have figured that out and harnessed it, it's now a simple question of making sure that it is seen and heard by the right people, period. Whatever you've done in the past, I mean, I have a very checkered past. I've spoken about this on multiple forums. I have done some things which I am not particularly proud of, but I owned it. I said, yeah, we, 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 were, we were weirdos at some point, but you own it and you say now, at this point in time, whoever is in my space, and I always remind people, guys, there are 8 billion breathing human beings on this planet, plus minus, give or take a few hundred billion. We are many of us. So you're not restricted to just that person or that group of people that you are used to, all right? Spread your wings, put yourself out there because where you are might not be where you're supposed to blossom. 
all right? People tend to compare, and I love how other speakers have, have spoken about comparing yourself. One of the things that we will, we will focus on in personal branding and the entire career hub module is to own your uniqueness, own it. We can't all be apples, oranges, bananas, uh, grapes. You might start comparing yourself to an apple, but you're a grape and you're growing in the soil that is good for an apple. If you're not good for, if, if that's not your, the correct environment, move. It's okay. You can move. You can you can find a way to 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 blossom and to bloom and to find your brand and your true brand purpose as long as you first accept who you are. Pambana na haliyako, kubali haliyako. Own yourself. Yeah. And so we'll be able to work through this, Dori. No problem. But as you said, Monesi, I think it's so important to recognize that you're, there's nothing set in stone that you can make a choice on what direction you're going to take. I love the story, the testimonial that we got from a, a, an amazing lady called Lorna. I don't know if you remember Lorna. When Essie, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and she had been in a bank for eight years trying to change her job, eight years. She came into the program um, and we challenged, I remember you challenged her and said, you know what? Um, yes, people say your work speaks for you, but no, <laughs> you speak for yourself. And for the first time in that period of time, she raised her hand in a meeting and took some responsibility within six weeks, had shifted her job, multiplied her, her income simply by raising her hand because she got noticed. And that's amazing. I know this is, this is a question for you here, uh, Monesi. This one, this one I know you, you knock it out of the park. Emma is asking, can you give us tips on how your appearance is uh, to, uh, sorry, how you can use your appearance to improve your overall brand? How can you use your appearance to improve <clears throat> your overall brand? Perfect question. And, and, and like I said, your, your brand is, your personal brand is, is a combination of your first impression and your last impression and the effect that this, this impressions have on the people around you that, and, and to make it a promise. So let's talk about your appearance, which is definitely banked on your first and last impression. Appearance is linked to the five ways in which we perceive our environment. We are human beings. We have five senses. We need to smell, touch, taste, see, and hear. So part of that sensory branding, that sensory aspect of a, or appreciation of our environment, we judge our environment based on these five senses. And so if people see something that they like and they hear something that they like, what happens is they qualify that in their mind. And within the first three to seven seconds, something has happened in their minds. What they now need to do after that is to decide, this qualifier, can I confirm it by engaging this person further? And if they engage you within a minute of engaging you, they will then decide, ah, actually, whatever I thought of this person, they have confirmed, the brand sticks. But if you send a message which does not, which does not correspond to what you were originally portraying, then there'll be, a, there'll, be a, there'll be a disconnect. And that's why it's not first impression, but it is last impression. You have to pay attention to those two things. And one of the things that you will see, especially in our, in our module on building your social capital, because we know that your brand does not exist in a vacuum. It is dependent on the people around you. Your network is your net worth. Your brand is only as useful as it being impactful to the people who can make sense of that brand brand. So we will talk about communication and the aspects of communication. And this is the point, guys. 10% of communication is what you say. Only 10%. The entire 90% after that is how that thing is said, the tone, the presentation, etc. And 50% nonverbal cues, how you dress, how you appear, your environment, your body language, your demeanor, your attitude, it's a whopping 50%. So your appearance, I mean, I'm sitting here, I could have easily been sitting here in a, in a, in a, in a, in a t-shirt and, and, and a hat, you know, and a trucker hat, and that would have been fantastic. But I'm sure some of you are already forming certain opinions about me. When you look at Waizaka there looking like, a, like the CEO that he is, you already, the word CEO has entered your mind. You have seen him there in that superb tie and that quality shirt, and it has already created some kind of confirmation so that you're, you are, you're now, there's no disconnect in what is being presented. So you must be cognizant that your brand does not exist in a vacuum. 
E equals MC squared. For every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. Whatever you put on is going to have a reaction on people. And this is where we'll discuss a lot of things in the class. This thing of, you know, oh, well, my dress, my choice and whatever. Listen, if I dress like a police officer today and someone gets, gets caught here and they come to me and they say, officer, please, idea, someone is being robbed. And I say, no, I just felt like dressing like a policeman. That's not, that's not a defense because I am sending a message with the way I am dressing. So dressing is critical to your branding, but it is not the only thing. Uh, and yeah, I told you guys, he has a way to make you feel good about yourself in a couple of minutes. Um, we'll address that later. Bridget is saying, being a full-time makeup artist, this is the last question we'll take for now, but please, if you can go through the questions, just try and respond. She's saying it's a full-time a makeup artist. I'll be struggling. I've been struggling with gaining visibility. How do I build my brand visibility in the makeup industry? How, how, what, do you, what advice can you give? <laughs> my first bit of advice is join the class. My second bit of advice is very, very, at a very top line level, you need to start to appreciate that as much, as much value as you're bringing as a makeup artist, yeah, there might be a few unique areas that you can start to focus on, which are what you call low hanging fruit. So there might be a group of people and we'll talk about them in, 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 the, in the branding class. There's a, there's a module where there's a section where we talk about your target market and you will find that you can have a primary, a secondary and a tertiary target market. And you as a makeup artist, because there's so many makeup artists, I have a friend right now who is teaching a course in, in one of the universities here on film and, um, and, uh, and, 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 and makeup for film, for example. There might be areas where you can find a niche, fit yourself in that niche, grow that niche, and then now start to expand it, okay? Whether it's online or offline. A lot of us try and do the, what, what we call the Luthuli Avenue uh, design. If someone is a makeup artist and, and they're doing this thing, you have... 30 other makeup artists doing exactly the same thing. No, no innovation, no creativity, nothing. I looked at myself and I, and I asked myself, when I see you're a business development person, you're a PR person, you're a communications person, but you're also a lawyer, all right? And you like to dress a certain way and you like to behave in a certain way. People tend to think of you as a snob or whatever it is. So what, what can you do? Which niche can you start to occupy and then branch out from that niche? And I looked at the niche of soft skills and etiquette. And I said, you know what? Let me at least focus a little bit on helping certain people find themselves as far as their soft skills are concerned. And from there, I got opportunities in media. I was in TV. I've gotten opportunities with Centonomy. I've gotten opportunities with government. I've gotten opportunities in the, in the private sector with individuals. But it all starts with finding your kanish. That there's a thing there. As a makeup artist, there might be a, a, a component where you, you can say, okay, you know what? For me, I want to, I, I don't want to just do everybody. I want to focus on makeup for, let's say, bride, brides, bridal makeup, for example, and only start marketing my, my, my services online in all the social media platforms to people who are looking for bridal makeup. It doesn't mean that I don't do other makeup. It doesn't mean that I don't do just general, uh, uh, you know, uh, makeup uh, things for, for, for people. But if you can find a niche, find those people, identify who your, second, your primary, secondary, and tertiary target market is, and we'll teach you how to do that. Then now you can start to expand from, from, from that point. When I see, I think if we continue, we'll be here the whole afternoon because I know that there is a hunger for this. I think there's, there's clarity that we need. We really need some time to, to unpack all these concepts. And that's what the Centonomy Career Hub program is all about. Um, we've been talking about it throughout this session. And I want to just to quickly show you once again what those uh, modules look like and then how you can be able to register and get into the class. I love it. Uh, Clifford also mentioned this. I think Bright as well, but Clifford is the one who mentioned know your audience. And I, I, I know we talked about that significantly in the program as well. So that whoever it is that you need to get in front of and has the decision-making skills, a decision-making ability, that's, the, that's part of your audience. And there are people who have influence on the decision makers. That's part of your audience. So you need to know who is the person you're trying to reach out to and, and trying to impress. Um, and not just to impress, but have an effect, bring value to, which is what we've been talking about this, this whole morning and into the afternoon now. Um, Emma, you're asking to see the, the, the modules. As I said, 
There's seven of them. Uh, there's the mindset, which is that idea of making boss moves, because that's what we're looking for. It's growth moving forward. There's understanding and knowing your strengths. And we use some tools to help you to break down your history and understand where, what are my skills? What are my strengths? So it's merging your uh, innate talent and abilities with skills that you have built over time. We talk about building a personal brand and Monesi does an amazing job at doing that and exactly breaking it down and how you can be strategic in it as well as social capital. There's the advanced career planning where you're talking about, now we're not just looking for another job. We're looking for a job that will lead to a, a specific role that will lead to another one. It is now about being strategic. That authentic leadership, listen, you cannot grow in your career without leading others. Doesn't matter what area you're in, leadership is a key part of it and it's all about influence. A leader must have influence in whatever space they have. And then the last one is effective communication skills. We start on the 4th of March, 2021. As we mentioned, it's one class per week uh, and you do it um, on Thursdays. That's 6 p.m. East African time and Saturdays, 9 a.m. The same class is run during the week. So for instance, if you've registered for the Thursday class and you can't come in on Thursday, you're more than welcome to join the Saturday class. Or if you know there's a wedding on Saturday, you can come in earlier in the week and you'll still get the information. That's the flexibility that we have here at Centonomy. Um, once a week from that time, if you want more information, you can reach out to wendy at centonomy.com. Don't forget that we have um, 10% lockdown discount simply because we understand during this period, um, there's so many changes that are going on in your life. And so we want to recognize that. And so we've reduced our costs by 10%. Uh, for all those who want to register, you can do so now. 650 shillings, about $6.5 today. And then the tuition fee in those installments that are on the screen. For those who are going to make payments, uh, M-Pesa is one of the most famous payment method that there is in Kenya. The pay bill number is 986850. The account number, put your name, for instance, Waidaka, and then the word career at the end. So Waidaka, career, so that we'll be able to recognize which of our programs you're registering for. Um, that M-Pesa pay bill number 986850. Do it today uh, because we have that discount even on registration because you've given us your two hours. Uh, we want to give you a reward for that. 650 shillings, you can do it today. Normally it's 1,650 shillings. So you're getting a good discount there on registration for being in the room. For those outside the country, you can use the bank. Uh, details that are there on the screen. Um, my huge, huge, huge thanks to all our speakers today, Clifford, to Bright, to Roslyn, and to Mr. Moenesi Musalia. We appreciate you all. Please don't disappear quickly. Just go through the comments because you have had an effect on everybody who showed up for this session. Uh, to everybody online, thank you so much. The, the conversation um, even on Facebook has been amazing. Pe uh, Penny Modoni, yes, woman power. She was just saying that was really insightful. Also to Mr. Mwenesi, I think uh, Shiko Azan was saying, ooh, wee, there's another one, the best Saturday ever. I love that comment. I don't think I'll forget that one. Uh, we've appreciated you all. And I hope you've taken notes and will learn. But remember this journey, it's, it's not just this session. It will take time. It will take um, your investment. It will take um, your purposeful daily living, just as Bright had mentioned, and all the other speakers did. And we invite you to come and actually be part of the Centonomy Career Hub program. Um, if you need any information, do reach out to wendy at centonomy.com. Um, she'll be able to help you out to understand how the program works, how you can be part of it. Uh, to everybody, a huge vote of thanks from me and the team here at Centonomy. You guys have been an amazing audience. The questions have been outstanding. And we love it. Uh, so thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend. God bless you all. Take care.